I'm Doug Mantog. I'm a luthier here in Sweetwater's Guitar Shop. I've worked here for about five years, done over 6,000 guitars, and today we'll be restringing this Martin guitar. And we'll start with, why do we need to change our strings? You can notice here we got a little bit of dirt going on. The sheen's just not quite what it used to be. You can see up here these are still clean, getting really dull. Tone's just not going to be what it used to be. So we'll start by taking the strings off and just loosening around the post. I go across all the strings before I start removing them here. All right, once all the strings are nice and loose, they're just not quite at tension anymore. I'm going to start pulling the bridge pins. I got this Music Nomad bridge pin puller here. Come around, I'm just lifting the pins out. And the reason I don't want to pull the strings or, or the bridge pins out at, at tension or even cut the strings is that they can fly all over. Sometimes they even stick in the top of the guitar. I had that happen once. Lifting them out. We can start coming around the posts here. Notice with these, they've got this little knot down here at the end. For me, it's not normally the way I do it because just like right now, it's a little bit difficult to get string back out of the post. So the reason I don't like to do it, or at least don't prefer it, is because let's say you're at a gig and you break one of these strings, we got to go through this little knot and give it a pull. All this stuff, you're in the hurry, in a hurry, you're trying to get through the song. It's just not quite as easy as it could be. From here, especially at home, I like to just wipe down the board. This is a rag. I put linseed oil on here before we go. This wood dries out. It doesn't have its own oil in it. So I like to get it wet. And then I wipe that back down. If I use too much oil here, it can kind of get gummy and sticky. Dust sticks to it. Not as, not as nice as it could be. There we are. All right, so for me, I like to put a little bend in the end of the string right here. That way when I put the string in, my ball end goes forward and I can slide my bridge pin in, and give it a tug to lock everything in there. I'm gonna continue that across all my strings here. With this bend, I'm just bending it around the first end of my finger with my thumb. It doesn't have to be perfect. All I'm trying to do is get this out in front of my bridge pin. And notice these bridge pins have a little channel in here. I want that to go over my string. That's how our string fits in the hole. I always do this in little segments, so I do everything at my bridge, then I'm going to bring everything down to the headstock, and then we'll tune up the guitar from there. It might be kind of hard to see on the video, but once I stick the bridge pin in here, I am giving the string just a little bit of a tug to pull it back up against the bottom of my bridge post. All right, now I can bring everything down here to the headstock all at once, starting with my low E string. Actually, a little piece I like to do here is when we loosen the strings, our tuning posts end up in a bunch of weird angles. I like to put them all at about a 45 in here to the middle. That way everything can run straight through the post, start to wind without trying to go at some crazy angle in here. All right. Starting with my low E string. When I pull this through, a lot of times I like to go about two tuner lengths longer than my post, meaning I would grab it about right here, pull that through. For me to lock the string, I like to loop over the top give a little kink behind, and then tune the post. I like to use a uniform distance like that so I get a consistent number of wraps on each string. And I want there to be extra wraps for this guitar because we've got, I see it started to lift up a little bit. We can just push those back down. I'll talk about stretching in a second. We're going to hit that on each of these. And I cut the string 
nice and close one. Some people like to leave maybe half inch to an inch of extra string. For me, I just don't like to do it because especially the high strings, they turn into little daggers. When I run the string through this next tuner, you might notice I don't have two tuners here. So I grab at the post, pull it back one tuner, and then I can pull the rest of the way. That ensures I have that same distance of string looping over the top and kinking the other side by pulling it straight up. Start wrapping it around the post. That little pinging noise is our wraps down here slipping past the end of our bridge pin, but it's still tight in there. You can push it back down. We just want to make sure they're securely seated. And again, cutting short. All right, running this next string here, coming through the post. I grab, pull back two tuners, and loop it over the top, kinking afterwards. The reason this over-the-top method works is because the, the tuner itself is a little bit concave. So as I tighten, pull the string up to tension, the top wrap uh, compresses over this, this loop that's coming through, or the, the string coming through, and the bottom wrap squeezing up on it doesn't allow it to move. In my opinion, it gives some of the best string stability we can and tuning to pitch. All right, nothing's gonna change over here on my top three strings. Go through, pull, and loop. And make sure my loop is always coming towards inside. Once more, pulling back, finding my, my end, and looping over. I use this kink at the other end to help hold it just a little bit past my, my wrap. And one last string. See the string sliding down the post there? That's kind of neat. Sometimes that happens, and sometimes you have to help it slide back up. But that's okay. All right, last thing we want to do right here is stretch the strings. Just like with that one, they all got to slide up the post a little bit. So I grab the string and I want to put a little tension. I'm helping that seat really nicely around that concave post, but also the strings do stretch out a little bit and they get a little longer. Just helping that happen so we don't have to play for a little bit to get it, get it to stretch out. Right there. I just stretch a couple times. Turn it back up to pitch. Sometimes you gotta stretch it two or three times to get it to, to stay stable. Like right there, we're still dropping a half step. So I'll stretch it one more time. And we just repeat that process throughout the whole fretboard. Notice I stretch the entire length of the string. I don't want to just push right in the middle. As it lengthens, it does stretch throughout the whole length of the string. Usually these high strings do stretch a little bit less than the, the larger low strings. We still want to check it until it's solid.
All right, and now I'm gonna check my tuning one last time. And that is how to restring your acoustic guitar. The strings we use today were Ernie Ball Earthwood strings. Thanks for watching and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like these or start at Sweetwater for all your music instrument and pro audio needs.